we start to then insult and create a, a barrier, right? 100%. Like you talked about, we start to become dogs. We start to become gorillas about it. So now I'm going to you up. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So now yeah, it becomes 100%. confrontation yep. for us, right? Be it now, and then it will come to you. You can't wait till you get it to become that thing. DNA right. of Greatness podcast. The DNA of Greatness. We want to welcome you guys to the DNA of Greatness podcast. I am your host, Aquarius Wave, and this is your master teacher, Coach Bobby Bluefield. Would you like to introduce yourself? What's up, guys? Coach Bobby here, just trying to, you know, every day get better, every day learn and grow and find new, new ways to connect the dots of life and present them to you guys in, in a unique way that hits different than you've ever been hit before with these Absolutely. messages. Speaking of hitting different, today's subject matter is something that is so deeply relevant to every single one of us. It's something that is applicable to your life, whether you like it or not. So you are better off getting gamed up, getting laced up with this game, and truly digging into the information we're about to get into. So if you got to grab a notebook, grab a notebook. If you got to grab a kid who has a good memory, grab the kid who has the good memory, because today we're really getting into it. And the subject today is you are what you eat. Mentally. Mentally, yes. So that being said, um, the reason this subject came up is because from the very beginning of Coach and I's relationship, we have always delved into the importance of what you feed your mind, right? What are you feeding on? What are you consuming on a day-to-day -day basis? And those things are what made us who we were, transformed us from who we used to be to the type of individuals who can articulate these type of messages and send these to the world and the way in which we live our lives. And so, again, I really felt it was of the utmost importance, especially when you have, you know, two individuals who are specialists in this space. And the reason we're specialists is because we've lived on the other side, right? We know what it is to fill your mind with trash and have trash outcomes. Yep. And so on the other side is how do we transform ourselves? How do we recode our DNA into that DNA of greatness through what we feed ourselves? So that being said, Coach, I really want you just to give us your thought process on what it means to feed the mind and the importance of what we feed our mind. Let's get into it. It's deep. Um, and you said it perfectly because it might be, not might be, it is the most underappreciated, underrated aspect of personal development. Mm. And we use all these fancy words to, you know, explain genres and lanes of of thought, and and one of those is personal development, like personal right. development courses and books. But human growth, human progression, is determined in large part outside of the things you're doing. Yeah. So people people are are chasing something right now hopefully they're chasing a dream of something right now to lose weight to build a business to become a better basketball football soccer player to build a, a podcast to become a speaker mm. and we get all we get so caught up in the development of the action items directly related to that pursuit that's so good yet yeah. out of out of the 168 hours in a week we are directly pursuing that thing via action items mm. for a minute portion of it. Yeah. Right? So, for example, if I'm working out, trying to lose weight, and I'm eating right and, and doing meal prep, trying to make sure I have a strategy for how I eat. An aggressive person like me, who's really into it, might commit three hours total a day to that. Yeah. Right, the workout might be an hour and a half, two hours if you're an aggressive person. The meal prep in aggregate might break down to an hour a day, seven mm -hmm. hours a week of meal prep, which is a lot. But let's say you're crazy about it. That's still only 21 hours out of the 168 that you are directly action actionable or actioning toward that dream or vision. Right. So what that means is your subconscious, 
your conscious, your thought patterns are more controlled or more absorbed outside of those items than they are inside those items. Absolutely. So I don't care what you do or what your mindset is inside the walls of that pursuit or the lane if you don't fix the the nourishment and the feeding of of who you are we, we can call it consciousness we can call it self-consciousness we can call it inner talk we can call it whatever it is if we don't nourish that correctly and actively for the other 150 hours or 145 hours whatever it is of the week we have no chance of success Absolutely. so that's what it's about to me is it's it's helping people understand how integral and imperative it is to make sure that that part of your your life is controlled. Mm. So right. I wanted to use an analogy, which is it's it's real, right? It's a real life example, but right now in analogy form, which is uh, they talk about you can out train a bad diet, right? Right. Yep. So what you're basically saying, bringing it into this context, is you can do all the working out that you want to do. Right in those two to three hours a day, but if you leave that gym or you leave that training session or wherever you are that you know you're getting your physical taken care of, if you step into a kitchen, you step into that pantry, you step into that store, and the first thing you grab for are those snacks that you know you're not supposed to be eating or something that's going to go against your overall goal, exactly. you're basically just eliminating the work that you just did. Right. right? Now, of course, there's nuances. Some people say, well, you can eat anything and still be healthy. Okay. Right. But for the average person who is doing the average amount of working out, right, your diet is probably 80% of what's actually going to give you that outcome. Right. Right. And again, right. coach can attest to this more than anybody else on this planet because he's been doing this for 40 years. Right. He's been able to keep this up to the age of 50 and look better than most 20 year olds. And he can attest to say that if you do not take care of the other side, the other aspect of your existence, which is the most important aspect, which again, here we're talking about obviously feeding the mind, then it's going to take away and strip from even the very activities that you are doing to move towards what you want to do. Right. Exactly. Right. And so, and yeah, I just wanted good, to point towards that. That's a good analogy because it's the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. You can't out. You can't outrun. In this case, you can't outrun in terms of your your goals and your visions. You can't outrun habitual habits of feeding your mind negative thoughts. Exactly. Or negative habits or mm -hmm. negative feelings. Right. All those things, feelings, habits, thoughts, right, will overwhelm anything you do in the hour or two that you're reading a book or you're or you're trying to uh, study hard on your craft. Um, if you don't leave that environment and produce mental habits and subconscious fruitful soil, it won't work. Absolutely. Period. It won't work. Yep. And I was I was thinking about it today in two in two frameworks. Right. I love. I'm like you. I love to to connect the dots. Right. So last mm. night I went and I I I'm, I'm, I gave a um, a lecture. I'm doing this three part uh, leadership class, mm -hmm. and I am trying. I'm trying. I am evolving into my gift of speaking. Yeah. Right. I still get nervous. I still have my hangups about it because I grew up with a stutter, but I'm growing into that. And when I'm around people, where I can I can fully use my gift, whether it's a BTY symposium whether it's a motivational talk, whether it's doing my leadership class, whether it's doing a, a podcast, when when I'm able to fully give of myself to an audience that receives it well or wants to eat of what I'm feeding them, mm. the positivity in my spirit is palpable. Mm. I feel it. I feel, like, I feel as if I am doing what I'm meant to do. That's so good. Yeah. When I leave that experience... And I get around environments, and sometimes the environments might be your family, yep. it might be your friends, it might be your job, 
an environment that does not quite recognize you in that light mm. for whatever reason, right? Maybe, maybe you've been doing something a certain way for so long that they identify you as that. Maybe you have been more comfortable for so long in a certain uh, role you're playing in your family or your, or your work or your friendship mm -hmm. group. For whatever reason, when you get back into those comfortable settings, right, that part of you that you're trying to outgrow speaks up yeah. and speaks louder and louder and louder. And when you're not in an environment that feeds you what you need to be fed to have the strength to fight this voice, you lose. And Absolutely. so today I woke up and I, I went back into my old, my current grind, which is training people, you know, with fitness. And then later on, I'm going to go coach football players. And not all of them are receptive to this, mm. to this version of Bobby that says you have to do all these other things right to make sure the workout works. Right. Or do all the other things right to make sure that football player in you comes out. So yeah. when I get in that environment, all of a sudden I, I can't feel what it felt like last night. I can't feel what it felt like to be positive about who I am becoming. Mm. And you fall back into that, into that old school of thought. I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm just a trainer. Maybe I'm all, I'm all muscle and that's all I got. And without something to go to, without actively creating structure around the, the food you're feeding yourself, like a podcast, like mm -hmm. reading, like turning the TV off, doing motivational work, like doing whatever you need to do to make sure that that feeling that you need to move forward is still there mm -hmm. is imperative. Because if you don't do that, you fall back into the habits and, and you can't fight that voice that pulls all of us back. So I, I want to get into this, but first I, I just want to, as a disclaimer for our audience, whether or not you are feeding your mind consciously, your mind is feeding on something, right? I'm going to let that be known. Yep. Now, for a majority of us, we are subconsciously feeding on information that is inherently creating a destructive or toxic environment within ourselves. And therefore, we manifest a life that is destructive and toxic on the external Right. So some individuals think to themselves, well, I'm fine. I'll just be on neutral. You know, oh, that's so serious. Why do I always got to listen to these, you know, audio books and these speakers, this, that and the third? I'll just do me. Right. I'll chill out. Guess what? There is no chill out. There is no in between point. Everything right. in the universe, at least universal principle says all things are either in growth or decay. Right. Right. And you can say they're part of the same process or the same cycle. However, nothing in motion, nothing in, uh, they say, what's the law? It says nothing in motion or yeah, everything in motion, motion stays in motion, in motion yep. right? So nothing remains stagnant. Nothing remains still, even if it looks so on the surface. And right. some of us say, I feel stuck or I feel as if I'm not moving anywhere. But what's truly taking place is we are being called into higher versions of ourself, but we're not taking or heeding that call. So right. when it comes to feed in the mind, I really, again, I want to get to this because I feel like for our audience, past, present, and future, this is of the utmost importance. If you are not actively seeking out ways in order to make your own mindset more positive and more empowering, it is always going to default to the opposite, right? Some people say, again, I, I can be in any environment and I'll use my willpower, right? Oh. I have a strong mind. Please understand this. The individuals that you see at the very, very top, um, let's say of specific industries, music, entertainment, business, uh, education, etc. The people that we all know, the reason why they are who they are and consistently continue to be those individuals is because they took themselves out of the environment that was not fostering that. Right. Right. So they could be thrown into your current environment, the one that you are subconsciously choosing to be in right now. And if they spent enough time in that environment, they will come back to that old way. 100%. That's why you see these rappers, et cetera, falling off as soon as they go back to the hood. What is yep. that? Yep. You are a product of your environment. And the first environment that's being cultivated is the one that's within you. Right. So I just want to let that be known, because sometimes folk really think 
and I have these conversations quite often, right? Is no, 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 but you don't understand. Like these are the people that I love. You don't understand. Right. You know, I, 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 I can. You know, I just want to listen to some that's fun and that's entertaining, etc. Not understanding that everything has its consequences. So just make sure you're choosing, and you're conscious that you're choosing, to instead of feeding the greater version of yourself, you're choosing to feed the more destructive, the more toxic right the degenerative version of yourself right there is no in between and i know that sounds so it sounds so black and white which we're not used to truly as a culture right mm -hmm. and even as spiritual entities as spiritual beings as we all are and we start to awaken to that spirituality sometimes we still want to live in that gray right. but when you actually get into universal principle you realize it's, it's, there is yeah. no gray it's, it's, it's all laws. in or all, all out laws. exactly absolutely and it, and all of them are all in or all out right right, right? Because all it takes is a drop of cyanide and a glass of water to poison the entire exactly. thing. Exactly. Exactly. And and one way that I thought about it this morning um, that I think would resonate with, especially if you are a parent. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you're a parent, you, you, you get this. You get this completely. Uh, we are trying, and I, and I did a, a, a post um, about Memorial Day. Mm. And I said, you know, part of part of our lives as we grow, part of what we feel in terms of friction is because we are letting go of a part of us we're trying to have die off, basically. Right? So the old coach Bobby, the old Bobby, you know, football player, you know, reliant on physicality only fearful of, of being judged that that bobby that protected me has to die before i can evolve into the coach bobby that would change the world absolutely it's that simple i can't have both right so part of the friction is knowing that i'm that a part of me that has got me this far that has loved me imperfectly obviously right yeah. but has done a good job of getting me this far i have to let go of so so it's a memorial, yeah. right? But if you fa if you frame it this way, and you're a parent, you totally get this. When you have a newborn baby, mm. like the new version of you is a newborn baby mm. that you want to protect and lead and nurture. You do two things with newborn babies. Yeah, you have them avoid all or most media, mm. or most or most you control the narrative going inside of them, what they watch, what they listen to. You don't curse around them. You don't do yeah. any of these things. Why is that? Why is that? Because that's you don't want point. their brains and their subconscious to think that's normal. Mm. Right? And then what do you do? You protect them from the outside environment of people and places and things that might either do them harm or prevent them from growing into the being you want them to be. Now, what Talk do we do about it. with ourselves? What do we do? The very opposite. Neither of those. The very right? we opposite. We don't protect our brains and our subconsciousness from from all the all the voices around us, and we allow ourselves to be put in environments, primarily our own voices, mm -hmm. that are talking to ourselves, and getting ourselves to do things we don't want them to do. So if our kid had a bad friend, you can't play with him no more. If our kid was over here and they were playing rap music when they were three or four years old, you can't listen to that. But yet with uh -oh. us, right, with our new baby of whatever it is, get a promotion, be a better father, you know, be a millionaire, whatever your new baby is, we refuse to understand and accept that it's the very same principles. We mm. must protect it. The same mm. way a mother or a father would do to his or her baby. Man, that's so good. Nah, you preaching. That's so damn good. And again, I really want to get into that aspect of why we treat ourselves any differently than we either treat maybe a stranger, right? Like that's the first layer. I always right. look at it as it's funny how we talk to ourselves or even those who are closest to us, the things that we would never say to a, a person right outside our door, right? Right. And then I bring it into kind of closer. So maybe uh, co-workers, colleagues, et cetera. What are the things that you're willing to say or 
the level of disrespect you're willing to have for those individuals, right? It might get a little closer. Maybe you might snap every now and then. Now we yeah. bring it to family. You might snap all the time with your yeah. family. Yeah. But when you bring that intrinsically, the conversations that you're having with yourself, if Crazy. those are to be externalized, you would think Crazy. that was a mad person. Crazy. Right? It yeah. would break your it's heart. Abusive. And yet it's this abusive. is, it's abusive. It is yeah. abusive in nature. And yet yeah. that's how you talk to yourself. Now, I do want to recoil from this and say i understand that we all have a level of internalized programming that is based and rooted in a lack of self-worth right? right i'm going to recognize that because for a majority of my life and for a majority of coaches we were ran by insecurity right by a need to feel validated by the people outside right. of ourselves we right. had a lack of an ability to validate self so yep. we went seeking it in every single way we could right yep. Me as an actor, uh, coach as a football player, even in his finance career, even as a fitness uh, influencer, we seek these different apparatuses, not understanding that the only thing we are truly desiring is to have that relationship with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's really what that conversation is going, uh, going on within. Yep. It is your relationship with you, right? You're in constant contact with somebody. Yep. And so I love to use this reference and I love how you use the, the with the child and the baby because whether you're mama or daddy, you felt that viscerally. I felt it and I ain't got kids yet. Right. Right? Right. And the reason I felt it is because it's rooted in the closest, deepest, most intimate relationship that you have. Mm -hmm. And as crazy as this sounds, your baby is still the second most important relationship that 100%. you have in your life. 100%. Yeah. Number one, numero yeah. uno. People are going to say it's God, but the God that you have a relationship with is a, ha having a relationship within yourself. Right. right. It's a, you know, there's a word that says you use the same mouth to curse your brother and sister that you use to bless God. Yeah. Right? That's crazy. And I take it a step deeper is you use the same voice to curse yourself that right. you supposedly use to bless God. And you can't right. have both. Can have both. Right. So, coach, I really wanted to dig into this aspect of it's like, first and foremost, like, why do we do this? Because some people might be thinking, OK, I hear y'all. I get it. But it's like, I just feel like I can't stop. I don't know where this is coming from. Right. Why do I talk to myself in this form of fashion? Why do I continue to feed myself so much toxicity? Why am I addicted to the toxic? Let's right. get into it. Without claiming to be a psychologist mm -hmm. or a psychiatrist. Closest thing to uh, it, if not better. But I've studied... <laughs> I've learned, I've gone through therapy before, uh, so I kind of get some of the nuances to it. Mm. The, 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 the best way to describe it is that it's a protective mechanism that we use because of, of, of trauma mm. in our lives, right? So in my case, for example, in my case, much of my negative self-talk, if not all of it, comes back to a fear of not being good enough and a fear of putting yourself, putting myself into a position where I'm judged. Mm. And so every time I get close to, to being great at something that's unfamiliar, that two pieces, unfamiliar and not directly in my control, I get fearful, I get doubtful, and my subconscious is trying to protect me in the most ineffective, harsh, abusive way. Yeah. And when you're a parent, you kind of get that because you, in the moment of danger, you will do anything you can, even if it means telling your kid they're an idiot mm. or they're stupid or they're gonna get laughed at, right? And it, and it sounds so abusive, but the parent's job in that moment is to protect their baby from embarrassment mm. or from going out into the world and being heartbroken. And so it comes from that. It comes from our brains and our subconscious and our the little bitty kid in us trying to keep us safe from all those traumatic moments and memories that have shaped us. Right. So in my case, the stuttering, the being, you know, being different, being a black kid, feeling ugly, feeling different. And, and then and then 
and then in my case, finding football a a an avenue that I could directly control mm-hmm. is it was an escape for me, and then now returning, getting away from that, and getting back to what my true gift is is to teach, motivate, inspire the masses. All those voices come back, mm. and, it's, and and so now my my struggle is to tell that voice, I'm okay. I don't need you, right? I'm okay. If I screw up, if I if I talk fast, if I stutter, I'm gonna be okay because yeah. that that voice, that protective mom, dad, coach Bobby, big Bobby, big brother Bobby, is trying to protect that 12 year old that remembers how it felt to be different. Yeah. So I think it's protective mechanism for the most part. That's such a great point. And that's, again, this is what I love about who you are, right? You're willing to go to those places. And it's not just you have self-awareness. That's one level, right? But you're also willing to show all vulnerabilities, right? And it also opens and extends an invitation for ourselves. Like, even for me right now, I had never actually acknowledged this specific part of my past, which is, you know, growing up in South Africa. So what most people don't know about that landscape is you're in a black country, but it's still ruled by white people. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's different than the West. Like here we only have like recollections of slavery, et cetera. But there you literally see the colonial impact. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's like as fresh as yesterday. And so. I went to a school that, you know, was an all white school, about 96, 97 percent white and there were three percent black kids in a black country. Yeah. But crazy. this is still like your everyday environment. Right. And I never actually acknowledged the impact that those micro traumas had within my own life and the way that I viewed myself. Right. right? Even the relationship of like the inferiority complex that I felt. Right. And so I'm trying to make up for that by, you know, compensating by being the smoothest talker or, you know, being the slickest or watching people in a certain way so I could study them so I could camouflage myself into their liking. Right. So I wouldn't be rejected because it all comes down to this. Right. We we do not want to be rejected. Rejection. We fear rejection exactly. at exactly the deepest right. level. Yeah. Right. Yep. And once we realize that the only quote unquote way that I am going to be accepted in my environment is to please that environment, then we start to form a second brain almost, right? That sink that secondary voice that we call the self critic, etc. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. one who is always correcting and auto adjusting for us to remain in that space of not being rejected, right? So yep. it's like moment by moment. And I see it so clearly now again because, you know, I was raised as an actor, et cetera. But like coach, like I've always been an individual who was just, I've always been aware of self. Mm-hmm. But it was usually a self-consciousness more than a true self-awareness. Right. Like right. I could see what was going on. I could see the processes, right? But I didn't necessarily understand why I was doing those certain things. So, right. you know, for an individual who's watching at home or listening to a car right now, You might be reflecting on, you know, just something that you're about to step into, right? So you're on your way to work, let's say, and you're dreading that conversation you're going to have with somebody. Now, I would take a step back and be like, okay, why am I dreading that conversation? Well, there's a part of it is because you want to be heard. Mm -hmm. You want to be understood, right? And there's a part of you that still wants to be liked, even if it's going to be confrontation, right? The only reason... The only reason you are yeah. afraid to have like the confrontation is because you don't want to lose that aspect of me being liked. Right. And that narrative runs as a microcosm every aspect of our lives. It's, Talk to me. It is it's so oh my gosh, it's it's it is amazing, especially uh, for men, right? Mm. Especially for alpha males like me. It boils down to that. Yes. And I and I told I've told my football team this several times. I say we frame things in ways that sound more acceptable mm. coming from a man. Like you piss me off. You upset me. Not even upset me. You piss me off. You get on my nerves. Yeah. Right? When all those things, all those phrases translate to you hurt my feelings. Exactly. Period. Yes. Period. And I and, and I'll I'll pause and I'll say, "Wow, 
what else is it? I know you can't say it because it's not cool to say to another dude, you hurt my yeah. feelings. But I say, guys, there are times when I feel bad because you hurt my feelings. Yeah. I feel bad because a part of me wants to still be light yes. by you guys. Yes. And for us to ignore that and it's not so ignore the, acknowledge the, the it for what it is enables us, disenables us, disables us to move forward exactly. and to grow. So, so I wanted to talk about there's a BTY symposium that you recently had. And you bought this statement up and it hit home for me, right? It was the first time I heard it phrased in this way, which is how many of y'all have actually told somebody like you hurt my feelings? And out of all the boys that are there, it's probably 80% guys, right? Yeah. All the boy athletes, the basketball players, football players, whatever it is, inner city kids specifically. So we know the demographic. Yep. And maybe like two kids put their hand up. Yep. Right. And one was like jokingly, right? Right. Mr. Exactly. G Mr. Jim Carrey. So, exactly. But in that, I saw something so deep and I was like, every single one of these kids has felt that over and over again. And it's probably even going to feel that at some point at this camp, right? I feel mm -hmm. rejected. I wasn't fast enough. Maybe mm -hmm. I wasn't paid attention to the girl. Mm -hmm. She wasn't looking at me, but then you went and talked to her and you knew that I liked her. Like all these different storylines. Exactly. And it all comes down to what you're talking about, which is you hurt my feelings, but I'm not able to acknowledge that. And I wanted to take it even just at one more step, which is we not only say, you know, oh, you, you know, you pissed me off, you made me angry, et cetera. We start to then insult and create a, a barrier, right? 100%. Like you talked about, we start to become dogs. We start to become gorillas about it. So now I'm going to beat you up. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So now yeah, it becomes 100%. confrontation yep. for us, right? And this isn't necessarily just to say this is a male thing, but you usually see this in the male demographic. Right. There's two things that happen. Number one is there's an outward aggression. And number two is there's an internalized aggression. Right. So there's a guy named Dr. Gabor Mate, who is one of the foremost true doctors in, in the space of like, I believe this is, I don't even like to call it holistic or anything because that discredits it. True healing. Right. Mm -hmm. He came mm -hmm. from the traditional surgery, um, you know, um, what you call it, Ho um, homeopathic modern, medicine. Modern medicine, like homeopathic. Exactly. Oh, quote unquote, yeah, modern yeah. medicine, Western yeah. medicine. Right? Right, right. I don't want to just say modern because it's very yeah, specific. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yep. The, the medical industry. Medical. Yeah. And now he's come out and said what causes every chronic disease is stemmed in childhood trauma. Yep. All. Not some, right. and this is research based. Right, right. And he says his industry fails to look at the research and implement it because you know there's many vested interests, etc. Right, and some just simply don't know. Right. So the reason I bring him up is this. So he says again, the core of these things are childhood trauma, but more specifically, it's when these traumas are not processed and worked through in a conducive way to yourself. So right. he says 70 to 80% of autoimmune diseases are found within the female demographic. And that's interesting because autoimmune is when your immune system fights itself. Yeah. Right? So it's an internalized anger if you really think about yeah. it. You're basically fighting yourself. Yep. Whereas when you find men, you find the heart attacks, the strokes, etc. Yeah. These outward expressions. That's true. You find that within men. Right. Right. Now, again, I'm, I'm bringing this up because obviously there's going to be people listening to this who've gone through things and might have never gotten answers. Like, here are your answers. I'm not the doctor. You can go look him up yourself and you will find bodies of research that back everything he's talking about yeah. bar for bar. Right. But the reason I bring this up is because we, we see some of these things play on the surface and we don't take any measure to get deeper into them. Right. Right. We, we were taught to fear the emotion, to suppress the emotion. Uh, negative emotions are bad. So always look to get to the good emotion, right? Right. And so what happens with that is when you have feelings of anger, feelings of resentment, feelings of bitterness, what you do is because they're not expressed in a healthy way, which like coach is saying, you hurt my feelings, communication, right? Yeah. Letting these things be known. What happens is they're going to do one of two things. They're going to cannibalize on you or they're going to become outward expressions that are going to end how many of us in jail? Right. How many of us in a, in a graveyard somewhere who didn't have to be? How yeah. many of us getting kicked out of job from job opportunity to opportunity yeah. and always finding ourselves down on our yeah. luck? 
Like these, this is having real life consequences. So what we're talking about today, folks, we're just now getting into it. It's going to be a two hour podcast, like you said, Unc. But I, I really like, I always feel this need to express. It's like how dire the actual situation is. Because sometimes yeah. we sugarcoat it. This episode of the DNA of Greatness podcast is brought to you by the BTY Symposium. The BTY Symposium is an immersive workshop aimed at getting the student athletes the tools they need to achieve their ultimate dreams. Whether a one-day or multiple-day format, the symposiums provide an all-inclusive environment that nourishes athletes physically, mentally, and emotionally. Now back to the show. I mean, we study it, right? You and I study mm-hmm. this stuff, right? And there's, there's great people out there like Dr. Dispenza and mm-hmm. even you know Dr. Atia from more of a health standpoint. But mm. And I forgot what, I think it might be the human eye. Mm-hmm. Human eye slash brain, but I know there's an animal that the the vision or what they see is actually upside down, and their brain flips the picture. So what? Yes. So I, I, I'll, I'll I'll research it and I'll, I'll put that. a link on 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 the podcast uh, mm. uh, commentary. But yeah, what an animal? I believe I believe it's humans. Actually, the visual that your eye transmits is actually upside down, and our brain flips it, or the animal's oh, wow. brain flips it. Uh. I say that because there really is no reality in our world other than Uh-oh. what we create. Wow! And if that eyeball flipping thing was too much for you, to you know, all the all the listeners and viewers. Then I'll frame it this way: How can, how can a woman who is a little bit chunkier, mm. maybe a little thicker, right? Mm. How can that woman be completely happy mm. in this neighborhood, this environment, this culture, and feel sexy and attractive, but yet over here in this culture, this environment? This demographic be depressed and on the verge of killing herself. Wow. Right? So my point of all that is all the things that we go through, all the things that traumatize us, mm. begin to put on us a stamp of what reality is. Mm. Right? And unless we find ways to literally create our own reality we succumb to a continuation of that same programming, right? Because there really is no, there really is no underlying desired body type other than what we created. Absolutely. I mean, women in the 40s and 50s body types, right, were much different than they are now, the desired body type. Right. And they'll be different whenever, right? I always, I always tell the story. Like, six-pack ass on a man wasn't attractive until recently. Almost oh, definitely. Probably like the last <laughs> 20 years. Most definitely. You know I mean? So it's like... It would have looked strange. That. Yeah. Like we created that, right? Mm-hmm. So why then, can, why then can we not understand that maybe individually we're creating a reality that's A, not true, mm. B, that might be harming us, and most importantly, C, that in an instance, we could change. This is a beautiful segue, uh, a beautiful segue right back. No, absolutely. So again, what then paints that reality, right? What molds and shifts and crafts what we see as truth? Right. And that all comes down to information that you're feeding yourself right a baby is born neutral right so that that baby is born at neutral they have no program in them they have no bias they have no concern they have no worry what should i be worried about and what shouldn't i be worried about but as soon as they touch down on this planet as soon as they emerge into this life they begin on a journey, on a process of being conditioned into whatever is around them. Correct. And that's what they take as reality. So as you even said about Correct. the communities, 
what like you know one community accepts you and let's be real we know what community we talk about yeah. if you got a little yeah. <laughs> a little yeah. cushion yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you you know you yeah. exactly yeah. you know what's yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. you gonna stand out yeah. you gonna stand yeah. out in our community right yeah. you are yeah. you are the prize we are we're Come taking applications <laughs> we're taking applications <laughs> 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 But it's, you know, it's like, it's the programming. It's it's the things that you see, your aunties, your uncles, like the conversations that are being had, the temperaments and the feelings that are being felt in that environment are starting to create and mold your reality. That's and right. yes, I understand that at a certain age, at a certain time frame, we do not have control of what is being seeped right. into our subconscious, right. right? That's true. Right. However, if you're listening to this right say now. It. Say it, say it. Without a shadow of a doubt, it's on you. Now you do. Now you do. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. It's on you it's now. On and you. this ain't to say, oh, this to blame. You know, I, there was a comment I got yesterday. And I, I've seen every type of comment and how people try to, you know, uh, protect the, the victimhood narrative. Yeah. Right. And I have a lot of empathy and grace, but I'm also straight and direct. Yeah. Right. That's what Coach and I have uh, in common amongst many other things. And so this dude basically is saying, you know, about personal responsibility. Well, what if this person did this? And he's talking about, you know, people like to talk about their personal thing on your post sometimes. And, yeah. you know, I can appreciate the sharing this story. Yeah. But I realize it's the story and the narrative that's running in their head all day. Right. So this dude, he's posting on something I was talking about, uh, you know, personal responsibility and the power of taking responsibility. Yep. And that's how that's a sign of spiritual maturity. Yep. Right. And he said, well, what if this has happened at my job and they owe me money and da, da, da. I said, well, if it's a legal issue, I would take it up, you know, with uh, legal resources. Yeah, exactly. But then he continued on the message and said, well, yeah, like, okay, okay, yeah, I take responsibility and accountability. But then if I just blame myself, so if somebody else does something, then I should just blame myself. And I said, no, 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 you got to understand something. And this is a message to all of us. And I have to remind myself of this. Yep. Accountability is not the same as blame. Right. Blame is a shaming tactic that we use in ourselves or others right. in order for them to quote unquote change behavior. Right. right. And it's very ineffective. Right. And it's more destructive than it is productive. Right. Yep. Accountability is saying I have control over this situation. Yep. So it's actually empowering. Blame empowering, says poor yeah. me. You yep. know, blame is a self pity or a self loathing spirit. Yep which says poor me, whereas accountability or responsibility is I have power to change my circumstance. Yep. And so when coach and I talk about stepping into that space of reclaiming what we feed into our mind, and we're going to end up talking about why it also matters and how important this actually is. It comes down to you saying, I am the one choosing what I'm scrolling through, what I'm listening to, whose conversation I'm entertaining, I have family members I don't talk to anymore. Huh? Yeah, 100%, man. Yeah. Like, well, what else can I tell you? Do I yeah. love them? Oh, absolutely. I love you, but we're yeah. not in the same frame of reference. You you continue to try feed me something I don't want to eat. Right. I'm not going to go to that. If I'm at a buffet, I'm not going to go to everything I don't want to eat and just look at it right. and taste it a like little it. bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Right, exactly. Because exactly. so, you like it. So, yeah. Unc, I want to, secondly, I want to then... Um, I know we don't have a structure, but we do have a structure. That's just again the way that we <laughs> that we move. But is what is the importance of what we feed ourselves? And if you need me to go a little more nuanced in that question, I will. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so an example. Most people say that you are what you eat, as in food, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, in essence. Yes, you are partially what you eat food-wise. You eat three meals a day, they're going to have a chemical reaction in your body, and that chemical reaction is going to you know, produce an outcome. However, we also have 60 to 80,000 thoughts in a day Yes, that have a chemical reaction on the body. So which one do you think would be more powerful, right? right. So right. therefore, it's like some people are saying, well, you know, it's the food that I'm eating, or... Um, I don't know like what other excuses, but there's thousands of excuses out there. I just haven't used them on myself for so long yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Because I, yeah. I can't live yeah. with it. But is it's like reverting to, no, it's not that, it's this. Right. Right? That's what I really want to get to. Like, no, it's yes. not yeah, those yeah. external and, and things. Told, it's what's in your mind. I told my class last night, um, mm. uh, it, it was a, a class on leadership, but it's all the mm. same. Right? Mm. All this stuff is the same. So I went over my five steps to greatness with them. From a leadership perspective, uh, 
but I but I told them in this in this same context. I said, um, you have to become that thing you want to become, mm -hmm. right? And I think you and I said it in our last podcast, right? You have to become mm -hmm. it. And what that means is the in between time, in between time, and in between time, like the old song. You have to. There's two pieces to it. Mm -hmm. So, step one of the five steps to greatness is want, right? Mm -hmm. Which mirrors and matches the desire step, which is in, in, in uh, Think and Grow Rich. Step one in Think and Grow Rich. But that is a, is a matter of energy and a mm -hmm. matter of emotion. So when I say you have to want something, to get it, you gotta want to be lit, lean. You gotta want a Division One scholarship. You gotta want to be a millionaire. You gotta, you gotta want it. All these, all these vague, ambiguous terms, right? right? What that means is your, your, your spirit and your, and your, and your soul emotes based on what you're thinking about, mm. right? So, for some of us, there's a natural, and inherited and or inherited desire. Right? I use the example of, of my son plays Pop Warner football and they played a team in, in from Oakland. Mm -hmm. And these kids were like this whooped our butt, aggressive, like and the, you know, the parents saw them, our parents saw them as being mean and aggressive. And I said, No, what happens is this morning, that kid right there that just laid out your son had to walk over four or five brothers. Mm. Right? In a in a roach infested one bedroom room. Yeah. Borrow his brother's cleats to come play. So when he yeah. sees you come up in your suburban with your new cleats, his emotion is a lot different. His yeah. desire to go to the NFL is a lot different than your son who just says he wants to. That's a great point. Right? Wow. And that and so he or she inherited that desire. And the want is 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 a is in his soul, in his spirit. Right? So what happens is in between time. The emotion you feel connected to your vision has has a feeling to it. Mm. So if you want to be impactful, you want to build a business, you want to you want to lose fifty pounds. You're feeding yourself emotions and thoughts that make you feel good about that. So according to quantum physics and law of attraction, the universe sends you more things. Mm -hmm. Right, it sends you more things that match that vibration, which Correct. makes you think about it more. Which mm -hmm. is a snowball effect. Which oh my, oh my God, how'd you get fit, Coach Bobby? I don't know. I just it, it, it happened, right? No, it didn't happen. It happened because I felt good. Yeah, when I thought about it. So, mm -hmm. in order for for us to feed ourselves the right things, they have to number one. This is number one. They have to be things that make us feel good about that thing. Mm -hmm. So now, does the movie do that? Mm. Does this music do that? Yeah. Does this conversation in this relationship do that? Do these yeah. things make me feel good about wanting to be a lawyer? Yeah. Or wanting to be 50 pounds lighter? Or wanting yeah. to be a speaker? In my case, again, I left last night feeling tremendous mm. about my ability to teach people and motivate people at all levels. These are all grown ups, right? Today, I come into my, my old environment. Which is dying. I'm, I'm birthing a new coach, Bobby, and they're not as receptive. Mm. So now I'm looking at myself like, man, I kind of, I kind of suck at this thing. Wow! Like these guys don't even listen to me. Like, am I just a trainer? Am mm. I just this? So now I'm feeding myself some things that are not good. Now some of us have an environment like that: a job, a, a spouse, a best friend, who. We're, we're, we're either stuck with or we have to do for now, right? So mm. I, I have to do that for now. Mm. But I can't complain about it and say, well, I, I'm stuck in this environment. They don't, they don't appreciate me. They don't see me as a manager yet or whatever. And then leave that environment and spend the next two, three, four hours of time I could be spending catching up on my watering yes. of, my, of, of my soil and spending that time freely openly choosing not to feed myself the right stuff oh i have to please continue i have to show you this i didn't know when it was going to become relevant 
but it's relevant right now. <laughs> and it's it's a quote that was said by an individual named Myron Golden, who's probably my, my favorite person when it comes to like the sales space, et cetera. But he's really, he's like a pastor, right? You know, he's he's your everyday deacon and he's somebody that I highly recommend any and everybody to name? listen to. He's an OG. His name is uh, Myron Golden. Uh, older Myron black Golden. dude with a big white beard. I've definitely sent you one of his oh, videos before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the quote is, stop playing at the things that you want other people to think you're serious about. Oh, snap. Yeah. yeah. That. <laughs> stop playing Play at, the things. at the things that you want other people to think you're serious about. So just like you said, Unc, is you're complaining about how it's not showing up in different ways, right? How the people around you, like me with my family. At a certain point, I was thinking, man, like, does my pops not see my gift? Does he not see this in me? But then it's like, bruh, you're not in that room filming podcasts and filming shows and filming this and filming that. You're not putting anything out there for them to see. Right. Right? And even right. sometimes I am guilty of this as anybody else. And I also have an understanding that sometimes you will have people around you who are simply too insecure to support your dream and yeah, your vision. Yeah, exactly. I get exactly. that. Yeah. Right? However, there are some people who are only going to be activated once you become exactly what you're talking about. Yep. And that becoming is not an external becoming, but what's going on within you. That's right. That's right. Point That's blank. Right. That's right. So I want to get back to something that you were saying, Unc, about... And by the way, anybody thinks Unc, I'm not talking about like this type of Unc. I'm talking about Uncle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just in case you're wondering about Unc. But there's something that you were saying before as far as... Like when you're doing something, right? You have like the training you're doing, meal prepping, etc. So let's say you're doing that for, like you said, 15 hours that week. But out of the 168... It's only 15 hours. Yep. Not only that, but during those 15 hours that you're doing the preparation or the action item, you are also having thoughts. Yes. You are yes. also experiencing emotions yep. connected to those thoughts. Yep. So if I'm at the gym and the whole time I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm never going to get butt. Man, this ain't never going to work. Man, I'm telling you right now, this is probably a waste of time. If that's my thought process all day, then I'm not going to be activated in a way right. that's going to give me results. And right. this is a real life situation for me. Uh, right. There was right. years, you know this, there were times I started avoiding your workouts because I simply did not believe I could get buff. Yeah. Like yeah. that was the God honest truth, right? Even at times I would see myself in a mirror kind of getting bigger. I couldn't identify with that person. But what I identified with was, man, I'm just a skinny dude. And, you know, it takes so much to gain weight. And even people outside of me were starting to affirm my subconscious belief. Yeah, you know, uh, people who are skinny like you, man, you can't keep food down. Yeah, And no, then, yeah, you're exactly. right. I can't keep food yeah. down. I would be going along with that narrative in my head. And then that was the result. And for the first time ever, starting a year and a half ago, which was like December 2021, Till right now is the first time I've ever not stopped going to the gym and I put on more muscle mass than I ever had before. Yep. Right? I ain't looking like Unk yet, but like <laughs> compared to what I was, I put on 12 to 15 pounds of muscle in a in a year, year and a half yep. of muscle yep. and consistently and will consistently grow that and grow that and develop that. But again, it's not about the muscle. It's because the conversations I'm having with myself when I'm in there are absolutely shifted. Yeah. I'm not the same person. And so, again, we're trying to go into new activities while being the same person. Can I go? Please. Can I go? Please. So, this episode of the DNA of Greatness podcast is brought to you by the BTY Symposium. The BTY Symposium is an immersive workshop aimed at getting the student athletes the tools they need to achieve their ultimate dreams. Whether a one-day or multiple-day format, the symposiums provide an all-inclusive environment that nourishes athletes physically, mentally, and emotionally. Now back to the show. That's that's exactly what I was going to say. Is so. What happens is is we. So you have to do, like small steps. Hmm. Not small. That that sounds wrong. You have to make incremental movement toward becoming and i would argue like seriously argue after having spent as you said four plus decades doing this thing i would argue that the incremental steps you make away from the lane you're in mm. and, I, and i'll explain what that means in a minute 
are as not as important are I'll, I'll argue that they are more important and what I mean by that is this when you begin to do things and that quote sums it up perfectly when you begin to do things that affirm to you and to those around you that that's who you are mm. it makes the time you spent pretending you want to be that thing more productive wow so in the case of working out right i you know i literally saw myself as a not a bodybuilder but back then it wasn't really a term for like still not a term for somebody who really takes lifting seriously mm -hmm. i lifted for football but I saw myself as a person who saw that as being super serious. Yeah. I mean, I watched there was a 2 a.m. show on, on ESPN when it first came out, uh, a Bodies in Motion. And then there was a bodybuilding like workout show where they literally had a camera in a weight room for a half hour as these two dudes just worked out. That was wow. a show. Now I, I was there until 2 in the morning every summer, every night watching it. Wow. And then I would, I would buy like the craziest protein powder. Back then it was mm. like chalk. <laughs> and then I would literally, so I bad groceries in the in the army. So I was I was a weekend uh, gross, a, a bagger at, at the commissary. All my boys and I used to bag groceries on Saturdays. Mm. And I literally would buy baby food. And because I read somewhere that this high, you know, high density, uh, high, high nutrient density, you know, high calories, uh, in small amount of food. So I would literally buy buy baby food and eat it during my break. <laughs> right? But more importantly, wow. I made sure everybody saw me doing that. Wow. And those who, who I went to school with back in the day, Kelvin, Brandon, yeah. who watching this, they'll tell you I, I literally would get a spoon and eat baby food because mm. I was doing things that in my mind were what people who wanted to be buff did. So now when I worked out, I was already in that mind shift. Wow. Now reverse that. Had I been somebody who, you know, from, from bedtime until my next day's workout, acted at, as if I wasn't somebody who was going to be a bodybuilder or a football player, it would be a long time in that workout session before I kind of clicked in mentally That's a great point. into that thing. Identity. So you have to be, and people say you got to become it, but... You have to. And so going back to like now, right? So now, and I told you this, now, like I have, I have a schedule, mm -hmm. right? I'm doing all my, all my content mapped out, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm doing a pipeline for my speaking engagements. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a pipeline for my BTY symposiums, mm -hmm. right? I'm organizing my contacts. I'm doing all these things, right? But and, and one would argue that that has, yes, that's business growth related, but it's not really speaker related, right? Mm. But because I'm doing that, I see myself as a speaker mm -hmm. and a thought leader and able to do a podcast, right? right. Again, I've told you this. I, uh, prior to recently, very recently, like months, maybe weeks, have I been comfortable with speaking on in this tone of voice with my wife in the other room? What you can hear mm. me. I was that fearful of of letting this part of me be known, even though I've been telling everybody for the last five years I want to be a speaker. Yeah. Right. So, but all those small things I'm doing, right, remind my soul that I'm serious about it. Remind the world I'm serious about it. So guess what? Now things come to me. Exactly. Ideas come to me. People exactly. come to me. Opportunities come to me. Because I've done the work in the other 150 hours outside of the podcast, the lives, the, the events that I speak at. Because I'm living as a speaker exactly. more so when I'm not speaking than even when I'm speaking. Exactly. And until you do that, you won't you won't you won't become. So this is a perfect rerouting into what we're actually talking about here which is the concept of the self-image 
or the self-identity. Yep. What do you see yourself as, right? right? Because if we really get down to it, I understand. You've tried positive thinking, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work because the person who is having that positive conversation is not established yet, right? Yeah. It's like you're layering the positive over what you truly believe. Yeah. And so yes, exactly. there's a yeah. book, Psycho-Cybernetics. I recommend this to everybody on the planet. I think it should be part of our curriculum. It is my personal Bible when it comes to personal development, right? And it's actually everybody else's. It's like the foremost criteria. Now, psycho cybernetics is a very, very simple concept, even though it has a complex name. It's basically, uh, cybernetic is like a mechanism that's used, let's say, in a thermostat, which regulates temperature, right? So if you put on 70, if it gets higher than 70, the thermostat will come back to 70, right? That, or the air conditioning system will come back to 70. Yeah. And if it gets lower than 70, then the heater the will heat, kick yep, in to get it yep. back to 70. Yep. That's a cybernetic. So all of us have a cybernetic, and that is called our self-image, mm. right? So you have an individual, and this is a real story, where there was a young lady who was like some anomaly. She was all over the news, et cetera. And basically, she was wasting away. Like her body was literally in a place where it's cannibalizing itself because she was starving herself. Mm. Yet she believed she was overweight. Yeah. And she was 86, 87 pounds, right? Maybe five, seven, five, eight. And so the news anchor says, you know, do you not see that, you know, 87 pounds, like that's very skinny. And, you know, logic kicked in for a second. She said, yeah. But then immediately the self-concept kicked in and she looked in the mirror and said, but I'm fat. And if I have another meal, like I'm going to blow up. So this individual might have had stories all of her life of, how fat she was, how big she was, how obese, how she should always watch, you know, her weight, et cetera, whatever messages she got, or maybe it was a form of, uh, let's say subconscious re rebellion towards her upbringing, et cetera, mm -hmm. whatever yeah. it was, there's an image in her head of her being big. Right. So it doesn't matter what she did to herself physically. She stayed in that state. Right. Now, the reason I bring this up is because all of us are operating from a self image. Yes. There is an image you have of yourself that everything else is regulated. Yes. The beliefs that you have are on top of that self image, which then creates the thoughts that you have on a regular basis and yep. the emotions, right? Yep. And I've always been the type of individual to say, I want to get to the root of something because if I get to the root, then everything else takes care of itself. Yep. And I, you know, me and coach have been doing this like, you know, personal development for years, him obviously more than myself. And I have always felt like there was something missing because I tried to change the way I think, right? To change the way I feel, to do these practices, these hacks, these techniques. And it just seemed like I was going in circles until I realized you're taking care of things on a surface level. But it's like the person who is doing these things must change. So we yeah. think to ourselves, man, I got to I gotta get my quota. I got to get my numbers up in sales or Man, I, I gotta just, I gotta be a better mom. I gotta be, a, I gotta do things different. Or you think to yourself, man, I just gotta run my business better if I just get my number. But we never think to ourselves, I need to become the type of person right. who does yep. these things. Yep. Right? That's yep. when things start to shift and translate for us. So, as you were saying, um, as far as we kind of have this mentality of, you know, I can just kind of leave the rest of the day you know, doing whatever. And then for a little bit, I can get in my corner and do like the things that make me whatever. You guys have to understand before Brad Pitt was in front of that camera, like in his head all day long, he was living the life of a movie star yep. before you guys ever knew his name in his head all day long. Yep. And it wasn't just rehearsing. Sometimes it was, oh, he was maybe imagining people, you know, seeing him and all oh, freaking out. Because all of that comes with being a movie star. As, right. And that's why most people don't do it because half of it sounds crazy to right. the average person. For me, literally sitting here and calculating down to the penny of how much revenue that Unk and I are bringing in, you know, per podcast, per piece of content, et cetera, what the numbers are looking like, et cetera. You might be looking and saying, man, your podcast only got 50 views on it uh, last week. Man, you, you know, your shorts only got a thousand views. That's the difference Yeah, is because I am actually now walking in that when right. before it was right. just, I'm going to record a video. And then for the rest of the day, man, I don't even think I was that good, man. I don't even yeah. know. And that while I'm recording the video, I mean, yeah, I guess it's going to work, but probably not. It's probably just going to get 50 like last time. Right. So, you know, I say all this to say this is, and this is one of the most impassioned subjects I have in life. 
which is we have to start truly seeing how we see ourselves and that's where we start to make the change, right? Yes. So, Unc, you are a perfect example in so many ways, but I, I love fitness because it's kind of galvanizing, like everybody can relate to it. Where was the shift in you when you became the skinny kid to the buff person? And what did that look like? Yeah, so, so there's so many dimensions that, that relate directly to what you're talking about. Uh, I love taking notes, guys. So what pack, mm. podcast do you know where the where the hosts are willing Bruh. to sit there and as they go, take notes and, and continue the journey. No, with that's you. different. With that's why you, you're right? different. Exactly. That's why um, you're different. <laughs> Period. So, and so James Clear wrote a book called Atomic Habits. Mm. And, and that very subject of, of outcome based, process based and identity based habit change or, mm. or uh, behavior change was addressed. Mm. And in that book, as we're saying to you guys, no real change happens unless it's identity based. Yeah. Unless you become the person who does things that will lead you to the thing you want. Mm -hmm. Right. So what does a football player do? Not I want to be a football player. Yeah. And so a part of me kind of always knew that. Right. At my core, I kind of knew that, that I it wasn't going to be a diet or a workout program. I had to become the thing. And I tell a story about for years, like for years, for years, I was skinny and couldn't gain mm -hmm. weight. And I would lift and I would, you know, eat like crazy. Um, and I wouldn't get bigger. And, mm -hmm. and part of it was the reverse of what you're talking about with that, with that young lady. There's a Adonis complex, mm -hmm. right? Where bodybuilders think they're skinny. Mm -hmm. And they're freaking swole, right? And so they're always like, man, I'm skinny. And they're, they're depressed. And how's this for depressed? Well, it's, it's called Adonis disorder, where you, you feel like you're, like you can't see your muscle for what it is. Wow. So I was not, I wasn't that bad, but for the longest time, I just couldn't even see any growth whatsoever, even though there was growth. Mm -hmm. But I identified as a football player, and part of being a football player was doing the things. That will that would eventually make me bigger. Mm -hmm. So, I became the person who just worked at the craft because that's what football players do. Yeah. And because I did that, and finally after years, let go of the of the desire to have a condition based on my work. So I loved that process unconditionally. Right. Mm -hmm. Only then did I begin to see the benefits, and pretty quickly. Like by college, I was like, you know what? It is what it is. I'm skinny. I'm I'm out train these fools, um, and two things happened. I began to get more feedback from the real world that told me I was getting bigger, even though mm -hmm. I couldn't see it. And then once I let go of this of this need to have, you know, a condition based on it, things came to me, mm. right? But it's crazy because you because you do. You do become like wrapped up into what your subconscious has been telling you your whole life. Cause now it's yeah. happening again. Now it's like, mm -hmm. now it's like, what would you be if you didn't have muscles? Right? So it's almost a, it's the a, inverse. Almost, it's, it's the re inverse. So now it's like, yeah. are you a speaker or are you just a pretty good speaker for how you look? Wow. That's deep. And the same was in finance. Like, when I was in finance for 10 years, I was living a like a, a triple world because I didn't feel super smart mm. or super qualified to be a chief financial officer, even though I was, mm -hmm. but I knew I was pretty good for a buff dude, <laughs> right? And then I would literally go to the gym after work or during lunchtime in my suit and I would make sure I wore a suit because I felt big, mm. but not super big, but pretty mm. big for a CFO. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I didn't feel totally comfortable or confident in either world, but because I had the other part of me, it felt good. So now I'm like, That's so it's the good. same thing. My identity has been this, this alpha male who's, who's, you know, passionate, you know, semi aggressive. And now I'm like, is that why they like me as a speaker? Cause I'm <laughs> so different than the other ones or am I a good speaker? 
Wow. And so now I have to reframe that and, and recreate my self identity and make it more based on my content and mm. my character and my and what I say as opposed to how I look. Mm. Because even though I'll always, you know, be cognizant and health conscious, at some point I'm gonna be too old to rely solely on my muscles. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I have to I have to be okay with creating a new identity or at least relying upon the reality of, of, of what I am, which is somebody who speaks well and happens to have muscle. So number one, I had to write this down because this got to be a podcast episode all by itself. The Adonis complex. That's the first time I've heard that said. Adonis complex. And that is such a powerful like macrocosm for this entire thing of all of us see ourselves as something Right. Or we don't see like I believe we all have an Adonis complex when it comes to every achievement in our life. Yeah. Like we don't see like the small wins. We don't see the big wins as what they truly are. Right. Like one of my uh, most reiterated statement to anybody in my comment section on Instagram is make sure to celebrate yourself. And it's almost a reminder for myself. Absolutely. We're, We're not trained to or taught to. We're told that your celebration must be external. And if it's coming from within, then that's arrogance, that's cockiness, right. that's conceit, right? So right. it's really us like unlearning that and relearning. But getting into what you just said, this is so, so, so powerful, which is there is, like you said, there is a memorial you're going to have for the old version, right? Mm-hmm. There is truly a grieving process for the old identity. Yeah. Like, I'm um, again, this is where my empathy that. kicks in. Yeah. When I started having the deepest level of empathy for people and their change is when I realized how damn hard it is for me to change any habit it's that so I have. Yeah. Any habit. The smallest habit that I say I'm going to change this today, there are probably 77 times that I'm going to have day one again. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like how many notebooks I have where it says day one. Yeah, yeah. Da, day da, one. Da, 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 exactly. Right? <laughs> So when I started realizing like, man, there is truly, there's a process, like you say, everything in life has a process, right? And that's something my dad actually reiterates when it comes to everything, you know, but we talk business and, you know, spirituality. And there really is a process to, again, obviously habit formation, but the the death of the old self, Mm -hmm. right? And in different ways, because... Usually it's not like a complete and absolute, like we're often shown, you know, you have this great enlightenment, this great awakening, the third eye is open and you're, in most cases, it's like, I'm going to die to the husband that I used to be. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, to to the mother that I used to be, to the teacher that I used to be, right? The one whose self-worth is based off of what the kids are doing and how they're acting and how they're reacting and are they learning? Are they not learning? Right. Right. Like there's going to be micro moments where we have to grieve certain aspects that we believed were serving us at one point in time, right? And Unc, you are like one of the best testaments because, you know, people might not believe this, but you used to have like real anger. Oh yeah. And just imagine a man looking at you, you won't believe it. (laughs) No, no, I'm not being sarcastic. But but imagine it's like your passion was locked in that anger. Because your passion is actually one of the things that makes you who you are. Right, right, and and, and, and you get confused. Like I yes, can, I can finish off, but I, but I, yeah. I can expand on that for sure. Absolutely, and again, I was gonna segue this back into you, which is, it's like, I used to, I could feel it viscerally where you were at. But I was yeah. always by your side because I knew like your attention was always good. Yeah. Like wherever you were coming from. It was like there was a yearning, right? Just like me when I like I had the opposite. You like cling on to people and it's like shake them. I used to just leave people, right? Yeah. That was my yeah. thing. Like you know that rejection complex would just leave me and say, you know what? If I can't do nothing about this, let me just leave now. Right. Right. And it's from the same spirit. It's like you have a desire for people's change right. and you want the best for them and you don't know how else to get it, right? So you transformed so identities yeah. from an yeah. individual who is literally enraged to i believe it's like one of the more tranquil than most people who call themselves spiritual that i know like actually thank you for real and, like when i oh. yeah and so can i can i go in on that one yes so there's like three pieces to that i think notes right so and i and i realize this i realize this now so hopefully mm. 
not hopefully. So I will go over this in depth at a talk somewhere, mm -hmm. at a symposium, at a workshop or something. So this is the first time I'm kind of saying this in, a, in its entirety. So it won't be perfect, but it, it, it'll get better. I, ha I had this desire to help people my whole freaking life. Like my whole freaking life. To the point where when I imagine myself playing football mm. in the NFL, I always couple that that vision. Literally, I mean and no eight, nine, ten year old kid did this. I promise yeah. you. I coupled that vision with the off season going to schools as Bobby Bluford, NFL player for the Dallas Cowboys. So I envisioned myself playing, but immediately using that as a as a stage to help people. Mm. I don't know where it came from, but that was my vision. It's in you. So and I also had a vision of being a teacher, like like teaching English for some reason, but then I, I was afraid to speak. So football was the main thing I, that I kinda hung on to. I didn't know that. So fast forward all these years, right? So I go through you know, elementary, middle school, high school. I I have a depth of of self. I won't call it hatred, but self dislike that I that I masked with humor, with mm. with sports, with whatever. I'm you know I you know I grew up with, you know with self hatred. Yeah. Right. I would I, I remember vividly. And it's, it's it's not off topic, but it will seem that way. But I'll, I'll, it, it'll, it'll nah, please it'll, it'll all rest. of it. We need all of it. All I remember it. vividly feeling like everybody, my friends, my friends groups liked no, look nothing like me. So all the popular singers in my friends group, all the popular, you know, actors on the cool sitcoms. You know the the most hand, I, and these are things that that because I remember them proves trauma. Yeah. Right. I remember there not being like the sexiest man alive was never wasn't a black man until the nineties I think. Like 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 on on People magazine. Yeah. The sexiest man alive was never was not a black man until I think the nineties. Oh, and so, now it's every other one. That's yeah. So wild. that but that embodies like like so if you're a kid and you're going to a school predominantly non-black. You're like, wow, you know, so this is the cool kid on Saved by the Bell. Mm. This is the cool singers. This is the cool trends in clothes. Now, I, I would see people on television, Michael Jackson and New Edition, but they weren't close to me. Yeah. So so then I build up this this persona, right? This this character, this superhero called Athlete Bobby. Mm. Right, and now I begin to get feedback from the opposite sex. Yeah, from other guys who are like, man, you got some big old arms. Mm. So I equate my, I equate people liking me. Going back to that whole one to be liked. Yeah, I equate it in my head to all this. Mm. Like they like me because of this. <sighs> right, but I never lost the desire to help people. Wow. So then you fast forward a few more years. Now I'm coaching people. Yeah. And I'm teaching people, mainly physically, right? Boot camps, personal trainings, football teams, basketball teams. And all I know is this. All I know is this. Yeah. And because I, I know this, and people have responded to it for two decades, and now I'm able to teach people, which is what I've always wanted to do my whole life, is to help people. All I know is that. And so when, when on occasion, like every day, basically, <laughs> I offend somebody yeah. or hurt somebody, two things happen. I feel like crap inside. And my wife will tell you, my kids will tell you, when I leave that environment and I, and I come back to just being Bobby, I feel horrible. Mm. I'm texting a person. I'm saying sorry. I literally feel bad for being that monster in that moment. But in that moment, it's all I knew. Mm. So now fast forward to about three or four years ago, I understand all I wanted was to help somebody. All I wanted was to hide the fact that I still stutter on, at, on occasion. I still talk fast. And the only way for me to make sure that that part of me is protected is to be this mm. in the moment. 
So now that I know that and I understand where it comes from, I'm better able to sit here in the moment and say, you know what? I'm hurt wow. by you guys not listening. I'm hurt by the mm. fact that I can't get through to you. I'm hurt by the fact that. So I'm able to compartmentalize it much better. So what people see now as this converted soul is really somebody who's just understanding kind of what I was going through in my transformation, in my growth, and coming to, the, to a place now where I'm further removed from needing that protective layer of aggression and muscle and I'm, I'm just going back to the kid who was just afraid and scared. And, and now I'm okay admitting it. Wow. You know what I mean? That's the, you were protecting that child. Yeah, still am sometimes, but that's where it came from. It's hmm. me protecting that, that child and being upset at you because I'm trying to teach you the best way. I'm getting kind of teary eyed. Hmm. The best way I know how. And so I'm sorry for doing that, but right now it's the best way I know how. Oh my god. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, I uh, there are like there are moments and there's thousands of them. Like <laughs> already in the first three episodes, I'm just like everybody needs this. But what you just said right now, I think is going to free more people than you can even imagine. Mm. I just saw I just saw a mother in my head right now, for real. Yeah. I just saw a mother who heard that and she was finally able to come to terms with herself and she's going to eventually be able to forgive herself. Yeah. You for have how to. she taught to her child yeah. and how she because all she was doing was trying to help that child. Yeah. The best way she knows how. And that was the best way. Yeah. Yeah. And but I don't know what but real fast, but like you said earlier, like a baby has no choice. Like I'm adult enough to understand. Yeah. Yeah. What I did was lay more trauma on somebody else. Yeah. And all I could do, or not all I can do, but what I chose to do is so what? Now what? Now what are you going to yeah. do to fix it? I get it. I, whatever, Bobby. I get it. You stuttered. I get it. You yeah. were a black kid with a, with a mess of Jerry Curl that was trying. I get it. But now what are you going to do about it? Yeah. So now going back to our, our topic. So now in those moments, I resort to my identity. Yeah. But when you realize that it's not effective and it's hurtful to, to you, to them, but more so to you, yeah. then what do you do in between times to feed yourself yeah. the right things, Yeah. to give yourself the right food for thought so that you're able to grow out of that thing that you realize in your spirit is painful to mm. everybody. And we all go through it. Yeah. But the ones who grow and come out of it are the ones who, 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 who decide to in those moments where they can water the soil of their spirit, they choose to water it with with good water and fertilization, as opposed to letting whoever come by and pee on their freaking garden. <laughs> oh, this is this is nah, this turned into a therapy session for me because <laughs> I'm serious because so you know they say. Uh, well, I don't know who they is. Sometimes we just be like, you know, <laughs> no, right? Who the hell is they? But but you know, so <laughs> but there is this. Um, I guess this phrase, which is, you know, the only true apology is repentance, and repentance is changed behavior, right? Yes. And so, even for me, because whenever we talk. You know, the audience, anybody who knows us, you're going to know this off top. If you don't know us, you're going to get to know this is we don't speak from a pedestal. We don't speak from a soapbox. We speak right next to you like a brother, right. like yeah. like a cousin, like we're with you in yeah. this. We are like we are talking about us. Yes. Even when you say you, we're still talking to us. Right. Yep. And so I see that reflection of the parts of me, the unhealed aspects of self that truly did cause more trauma in other people's lives. And this isn't a woe is me moment, but it's like a reflection and an acceptance of responsibility to mm -hmm. say, you know what? I actually am having an impact on other people's lives due to the fact that I continue to choose not to feed my mind different information. Yes. Right? Yes. Because... You know, it's, I remember when I used to run around the streets and I was selling dope and all these kinds of things. And 
When I was riding in that car, making my deals and willing and dealing and running around and doing what I was doing, there was a theme music to selling dope. Now, at the time, it was Nipsey Hussle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was Rick Ross. We didn't have 21 Savage and all these guys yet, right? Uh, So for us, there was a specific soundtrack that you would play to get yourself primed for doing these certain activities, selling somebody else a destructive poison that was going to, you know, be a part of their detriment. And y'all were all a part of this ecosystem. But I bring that up not to say, you know, again, and oh, uh, what a terrible person to set. Or I've really come to terms and forgiven myself for a lot of that. And there's still some unpacking that has to be done. But the reason I bring it up is because we all have soundtracks and theme music to our life. Right. Now, it might not be Nipsey, it might not be Drake, it might not be music per se, but it might be the conversations that we're having and we're entertained. Do you know that the reason why you have stayed stayed in a state of, uh, of scarcity, of lack, a state of a lack of abundance is because of the conversations that you yeah. continue to have? And I'm talking yeah. to me. Yeah. Andy, because yeah, there, exactly. there are things that I knew consciously that I should not be speaking on if I truly desire to be wealthy, right? right? If I desire wealth, what sense does it make for me to talk about how bad times are and how, you know, the economy's going down and how the rich do this and how the rich do that? Yep. And when I really unpacked, I said the only reason I'm entertaining those conversations is because I want to be liked. Yep. I want to be accepted. Yep. Yep. Right? And so again, I bring up conversations because we undermine these and we don't put the the necessary impact they have. But I have to reframe it and say, when you are a child, it is the conversations that are being had that are forming your reality. Right? Yep. So your belief may have come from, yes, what you're seeing. But there was a reiteration of words that were being spoken into your life by people that you trusted. That's 100%. Yep. And so when we find ourselves going from infancy to adolescence into adulthood, we continue to perpetuate certain conversations among one another. And those continue to paint our reality. And because not real. Yeah, exactly. Again, is not real. A reality is a or personality is a personal reality. Right. Right. Yep. I love these little etymology breakdowns. Your personality is your personal reality, which means, like Unc said, make sure you listen to it 10 more times in the beginning of this podcast, is that your reality is specifically your own perception. And that is painted by the stories you tell yourself, the, the beliefs that you've internalized, and the beliefs that you continue to perpetuate. Because we can talk this, oh, but it's so much work, but, you know, it's so much program, but my mama did this, and my daddy said that, my grandmama did this, and I was raised in a foster home. I understand. I empathize with you 1,000%. But I am telling you right now, your beliefs are only staying your beliefs because you're allowing them. Right. They are guests in your home, and you have made that home a house, a house, a home for those beliefs. Exactly. And they won't leave without your permission. And the effect that they are having. And they won't leave easily or quietly. No, of course. (laughs) Of course. But again, because you fed them, you have nourished them, you have told them that this is the place that they reside and they could always come back to and feel safe, comfortable at home. Right? And again, I understand the reasons, but we really have to look at this. And sometimes, you know, you and I, Unc, we do this subconsciously, but it's like to hit something on so many angles because something's going to hit. Something's going to resonate oh, right, with you yeah. if it's and, not and everything. these things are never, I mean, unless you sit down and you, and you, and you, you know, itemize it and do a script, these things are always, ne- they're never linear. If it were, it'd be easy to live life. It's, it's always Absolutely. convoluted and messy exactly. and, and, and twisted. So these things naturally take on, you know, a, a path of, of their own, but yeah. but it still comes back to to you are what you eat, right? Period. You, you, your your mind is what it eats, right? And the environment you give it, you know, I, I frame it one way is that the more you the more you put yourself, so you have two voices, right? You have you have mm. you have well, you have you the mm. the, the new baby, mm. right? And you have this old roommate, mm. right? That still lives there. 
the more you make the environment you're currently in, an environment is everything. It's where you're, where, where you're seated, yeah. what, you, what you're seeing, mm-hmm. what you're hearing, what you're feeling. Those are all environmental, yeah. right? So the more comfortable that environment is for your roommate, the less likely he's going to leave. That's so good. The more you make his bed for him and bring him a meal and, and make sure that the, the heat's at 72 in the house, he ain't going anywhere. Wow. So stop giving that voice comfort by doing the things that you know you don't want to be, but that he likes or she likes. You know what I mean? So That's again, so when I come back, you know, away from, you know, last night I was doing my talk and it was like, I, I was, I was good nervous. And then I, and then sandwiched between that, that and, and this, you know, this was the other bookend of, of my progression was a was a podcast and, and a mm. lecture and in the middle was all the old stuff mm. and so the more i and and and, and this this almost cursed and this fool felt comfortable mm. this voice felt comfortable in that like yeah man you just where you belong bobby you know mm. just doing like burpees and push-ups and and fitness stuff you don't deserve to be so it was too comfortable for him wow. but not for me wow so we have to make it uncomfortable for that dude <laughs> you know and for you what is that discomfort because i have my own perception but what is making that almost a hostile environment <laughs> right inhibitable yeah. environment i'll say that not hostile because we don't want to right, right. Not, disintegrate. Yeah, yeah. like just, there's aspects of ourselves we're coming to accept yeah. but then in an acceptance you say i no longer need you thank yeah. you very much for your services right yeah. but you know it's the same as like they say your gut biome right when you're eating healthy and healthier food, your gut biome starts to change right. and that environment starts to shift. And so when you feed yourself something toxic again, there's going to yeah. be a reaction to it. Yeah. Whereas if all you're eating is toxic food, your yeah. gut biome is ready for it. Like, you yeah. know, this exactly what you're saying with the roommate analogy. And so, again, my personal question to you, Unc, is what what do you do and are you doing in order for that environment to foster the true you as opposed to? That old identity. Perfect question, and I'll and I'll, I'll use I'll, I'll use the food mm. roommate analogy that we just talked about. Let's get into right, it. To bring it home, right? Mm. So here is here's the crux, right? So imagine me, mm-hmm. and my roommate is the old me, right? So we both like comfort, mm-hmm. right? It's not just him, right? We both like how we've been living. We mm-hmm. both like watching crazy movies and laughing and eating pizza. Yeah. I decide to change. Right? So I go, I buy I buy healthy food. I I set my my Apple Watch. I don't have one, but I said to to get more sleep. Yeah. I I tell myself I'm going to watch more documentaries, all these things, right? So he becomes immediately uncomfortable. Yeah. Cuz I do, man, you change. <laughs> Yep. You change, bro. You're the same, you're the same Bobby, right? So, if yeah, I came, allow bro. myself mm. to to give in to that voice to him, I lose. The mm. more I put myself in position where it's just him talking to me, I lose. So, for me, what I must do is call my boy who's working out, leave wow. in the morning right away and say, I'll be back mm-hmm. to my roommate, right? Do all these things in small doses so that when I come back from the workout or I get off the phone with my friend who's in in New York and he's he or she's in great shape, now for the next 30 minutes, I'm able to deal with the situation, right? Mm-hmm. So I make sure in my life to, and I have been doing this more now, is to peace out throughout my days and weeks and months, opportunities for me to make sure I have that room, that friend, metaphorically, or that call or that visit to feed me enough for the next two or three hours. Wow. So when I pass by the television and sports center's on, I'm less inclined to sit down for three hours. Mm. I, got, I got a podcast in an hour. Right, mm-hmm. I scheduled a call with this person, so I've been doing a, a better job of making sure that I have check-ins, either official or just manufactured. It, whether it's a book, or a, it's a video, it's me and you scheduling out our content. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm doing things that purposely feed my mind so that when I pass by the old me in the hallway, I'm less likely to give in to him. That's such a great point. So that points to this aspect of, uh, they say like the, what's it? Uh, I don't mind is the devil's playground. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. If you're if you're leaving these gaps, and I believe it just comes down to lack of intentionality, right? Yeah. If you yes. live a life without intention, then you're gonna leave room for the dissension. For whatever. Can I get yep. an amen from the ones in the back? You know what I mean? So. Amen. Yeah. So for for me, I I relate to that, and also I even see it on this side as again bringing it back to your your consciousness or your state of mind, is, again. I, I created a video about this, and it said. Overthinking is your superpower. And it's basically stop trying to get rid of your overthinking. It's not the thoughts that are a problem. It's the quality of those thoughts. Mm -hmm. So if you knew how to direct your thought process and your emotional capacity, again, it's like, why do we actually care about cutting off those old patterns and, you know, the memories of the past? It's not the situation. It's the emotion that's still tied to it, right? Yes. So, yes. It's like uh, Joe Dispenza says, when you cut the emotional tie of the stories of the past, it becomes wisdom. Yes. Oh, right? That's yeah. That's a whole bar. Yeah. That's a bar right there. I like there. that. That is a bar. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. When you, cut, when you cut the emotional tie of the past, it becomes wisdom. Exactly. I love it. I love it. So, yeah, I so like for me, one. So for me, how I look at it is this, is, yes, I understand that it feels as if your thoughts are unregulated and your emotions are out of your control. But you got to this state by a simple process. And that process was repetition of stories, of thoughts, and ideas. And all it takes to shift your paradigm, like the way that you perceive life, is to have a contradicting and stronger story, stronger, right? Yeah. That's backed That's backed by, the obviously, the five steps of greatness, which is you have to have that want, that burning desire, and there has to be, like, the belief that you're cultivating. Yes. But belief yes. is cultivated, actually, by that process, which is, Absolutely, again, yeah. repetition, right? Yep. You believe what is repeated to you over and over and over again. That's why TV exists. It's called television programming for a reason. They just want to mm-hmm. repeat messages to you until it becomes a part of your consciousness, until it becomes a truth for you. And you start to exhibit those characteristics and attract that to you, right? Right. So when it comes to, again, this process of how do I shift my identity, the most people, again, they they don't get the result that they're looking for. And I need to stop saying most people because it also, it creates like a subconscious, like some people, but all all people have the capacity to do it. We all do, right? Yeah. Every single one of us has the ability, and Coach and I will reach this planet. I promise you that, right? By the end of our expiration date, we will have reached the whole planet. Yep. But what I'm going to tell you right now is this. In order for you to change how you see yourself, it's going to take work, but it's a different type of work than you've ever done. Because mm-hmm. the work you're used to is crunching numbers, is staying up for you know 18 hours on a up. computer yeah, exactly. yep. correct right pulling yep. yourself up by the bootstraps and said that's the work you're used to and that's actually the least fruitful action that you could ever take right right it is yes it makes a dent and it's very important however if you were to look at how our reality is conceived i want to make this as simple but still stick to the truth right so bear with me on so they say a particle is 99.999% unseen. And what we see as matter is only that 0.001%. Oh, wow. Okay. Which means by fact, this is not me who made this up. This ain't my uncle Leroy. This is by (laughs) fact, (laughs) is that 99.999% of what is we don't see. We don't see, exactly. Right? Is the unseen. So then to bring it home is to say, All things that are seen come from the unseen. And that can be shown by the things around us, right? The camera I'm looking at here, the laptop that's going, the microphone, etc. All of this came from the unseen. It came from the thought. That's true. So if I'm to know that 99.999% of what is happening in my life is coming from what I cannot see, would I not want to focus my intention on the unseen, right? Like for me, that's logic. I'm like, I want to focus on the thing that's running the whole thing. That's so true. Right? I like that. That's you so you true. feel me? Yeah. And this changed, I mean, this changed everything for me. Like, this changed yeah. everything. And that's why yeah. I tell folks, get your hands on psycho-cybernetics because it's applicable to your life. It's not just words to read. It's a practice to live by. It's a way in which you, you move. 
So when you're changing your self image, it is literally the equivalent of an image that you're bringing up in your head. Cause all the thought is, is an, is a mental image, right? right? Right. So if I'm, you know, don't think about the pink elephant. That's example. That's always used. Yeah. Automatically a pink oh, elephant appears in your head. Yeah. So that's a thought you having a thought and there's a thought of an image and the subconscious cannot accept a negative of a thought. You can only think about the thing. So again, I told you, don't focus on elephant. Don't focus on pink elephant. Don't focus on pink elephant in the middle of the room. Correct. There is no not. There is only what you're focusing on. So the first thing I say to people is you have to create an image of what you desire, which most people don't know. They know what they They don't don't know. know. Exactly. Uh, I knew for how long it took me. I taught all day. I don't want this. I don't want that. Right. I don't want to get sick. I don't want to not not, not be healthy. I don't want to be poor. I don't want to be this. I don't want to be that. You're creating images in your mind. Of the very thing that you're running from. Exactly. Yep. That's so. So we actually have to. That's a fact. Period. You. Your brain can't. Your brain can't create. (laughs) Not skinny. (laughs) Thank you. Right. Or it can't. Exactly. Or not. Exactly. Or or, or not poor. Not poor. Right. All I can see is poor. That's it. Heavy. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. So you know, with the five steps of greatness again, that that want, which is that burning, burning desire right has to be the first thing because that's what's going to lead you to actually create a new image for yourself yes like yes. i don't play i got notebooks literally written with my life story in them yes. of creating yes. new images because if you don't know what wealth looks like you got to go visit wealth you got to go smell it you got you got a phone where you consume stuff and you know about stuff you ain't even seen before yes. you've never come into yes. contact Yes. You got all kind of penguins and you ain't never been to the ice caps, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can totally as easily agree. look yeah. up. Look, I, I, I'm not making this up. I can show you right now. I said, I want that apartment in, I'm not going to say the place, but I'll let folks know. And I said, oh, this is the apartment I want next. This is the one. Mm-hmm. Oh, $4,200. Done. It's mine. Period. Mm-hmm. But who? But but before yesterday, before last night, I didn't even have images on my phone of the place. But yet right. I'm saying I want it? Yeah. Yeah. No, oh you don't. God. That's so you like the idea of it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So so for me, it's like, you know, I got pictures of Coach Bobby, so I'm like, I want muscles, right? <laughs> yeah. <That's real. laughs> no, for seriously, real. though. It's like, yeah. you say you want something, then what is the image that you're implanting yeah, into your it? mind? What, yeah. what are the ideas yeah. you're implanting? There has to be something to replace it. There's scripture that says, when seven, it says, when a demon leaves the house, when you kick a demon out, seven are going to come back. Right mm-hmm. now, I'm not talking physically, but metaphysically. Yeah, Think about right, it. When exactly, you kick yeah. one bad habit out and you don't replace that habit with a new, better habit, yeah. what happens? You're going to start binging. You're going to start doing yeah. crazy stuff now. Now, exactly. now it wasn't just a cupcake. Now you're scrolling through some stuff you ain't supposed to be looking at. <laughs> with exactly, the cupcake. Right. Exactly. With cupcake. Because exactly. <laughs> you had no replacement. So yep. consolidating all of that, right, as we're in this last segment or last part of our segment, is you really have to... Take this as serious as anything you've ever taken before. And if it matters enough to you, you're going to do it automatically. That's the thing. Yes. Like, if you're really in that place, I was so, too desperate. Uh, like, I, I was so sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was done. Like, I, I said, I no longer want to look happy. I want to be happy. Right. I don't want to yeah. look rich. I want to be wealthy. Like, I said, I'm done looking the part or acting the part. Like, I... <laughs> Right. I need the answer. And as soon as right. I ask that true, genuine question is, okay, are you willing to create a new image? Because that right. is what your entire body mechanism processing system is created to do. It's created to follow images. If I say, ooh, man, I'm going to get some ice cream after I listen to this. You already have an image in your head of you walking into the ice cream parlor, getting 100%. that ice cream. And yeah. that's what conjures yeah, exactly. that thing. So the same exact mechanism is what is used when we're going towards those goals and the aspirations that we have. Yes. Yeah. And the reason and I I'm had not... This, the... I, had this, I had the same shift when you, you know, what was it, a month or two, a month or two ago after that symposium, we sat down mm. and I had the same shift. You know, I, you know, I told myself that I was tired of being afraid to walk into my purpose and blaming the world and blaming my 12 year old Bobby's flaws on it. And I decided that, and and you and I had this discussion that my wife, my children, and and maybe as importantly, the world deserved better from me. 
And so I literally would say, you know what, my my identity is is going to be based on my reality, yeah. which is I am a former scared, stuttering kid who covered it up with football and muscle, who now has understood what he did and is willing to let all of that go and change the world. And and however scary it is, it has to be done. And so that's my identity. And 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 once I made that shift internally and began to just say, you know what? Let's live it. Let's let's live my reality. All of it. All of it. The yeah. good, the bad, the yeah. warts, the yeah. all of it. And once you do that, it's it's a it's a freeing feeling. It's 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 a um it's a a lifting of the weight off the shoulders when you finally say, I don't have to be that anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yep. Uh, like, because again, it's like I ran so hard for so long from so long. every yeah. single emotion. I was so emotionally numb. Uh, that's why back in the day, I used to look cool on the outside, but you could tell there was something brewing within. Yeah, and me too. Because I was, ways, yeah. yeah, same thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, was an in, it was an internalized self-hatred more than the yeah. one. Like, you know, we love to point at the person who's yelling and say, oh, look how angry they are. But do you know yeah. what your passive self? You're yeah. the most angry. You're the most bitter. Exactly, you're the most right? resentful. Exactly. How do I know? Because exactly. I was you. I was right. the one keeping it cool in the background, but I was judging <laughs> right. the hell out the world. Right, right, right. Yeah. So yeah. when when we say this, it's like, bro, like, I, I, the ones who fill us, fill us. And it's going to be the world, trust me. Who fill us, fill us on this. This is truly life and death. It's not like a nice thing. It's not, no, it's, oh, yeah. this will be really cool. This is your life on the line. This is your kids' lives. This is your family, the people around you. Again, coach's gift, my gift is connected to how many other people's blessings. Right. I got a call after this after this right now with a kid who wants to be one of my content creators. Who am I to say, oh, you know what? I'm just right. going to listen to that old yeah. voice so he don't well, get an yeah, opportunity. Exactly. No more, man. What? Yeah. What? And yeah, no more. Yeah. Who are we to to deny deny God what he gave us and then deny what he meant for us to give to others because Bruh. we scared or we caught up in our emotions or whatever it is. Yeah. No more, one has man. been put in our DNA. Yeah. So DNA any greatness. any yeah. any clo any closing words on as we wrap this man, up? Man, you know, other than you know this, you know the the episode was about feeding your body, feeding your spirit, feeding your mind the right things, right? What you what you eat, what your brain eats, what your what your psyche eats, um, is of the utmost importance. But as you can see, if you watch this episode. It's a much layered discussion. Mm -hmm. And I think at the end of the day, my takeaway from this is that we all have things that have that have caused us to have a certain identity. Yeah. At least part of which is protecting the real us. Mm -hmm. And all I'm saying to you guys is if Coach Bobby can let go of that version of me that has meant so much to people in many good ways and me, if I can let go of that part of me in order to become what's meant for me to become, to help others, then we all can and should do that. Mm -hmm. Because without becoming your true self and letting go of that stuff, then why are we here? Exactly. So I want you guys to, to, to understand that you're here for a reason. And the only way to do that, to become that, is to feed yourself the right things, feed your mind the right things, so that you can un veil and release this cloak of armor that's preventing you from becoming the best version of you and there we have it folks um my wrap up is this how on earth do you get us two in a room over the camera on the zoom how do you get to truly get what you just saw here packaged up in a workshop working for you implement this for your teams whether it's in the school system or in the corporate system. And so Coach Bobby has put together the BTY Symposium, 
which does exactly that. And if anybody out there knows somebody who either has a contacts in the school system, contacts in corporate, et cetera, for where they could truly find value for this, those who are truly looking to take themselves to that level of greatness, make sure to access the link within the description below and we'll give you guys full access. Uh, moving forward, we're gonna have even more built out. Like you guys are building with us just as much as anything, right? Like y'all are yep. gonna be family with us and see us grow and evolve and even within our business respect, within you know our careers outside of obviously just this platform. But um, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Obviously you saw the BTY Symposium and at least one of our ads that we show. If you are an advertiser who is also looking to you know just get an ad space, et cetera, make sure to contact us. Um, either through direct messenger. I think YouTube should have direct message at this point. Yeah. If it doesn't, we'll give you guys a contact also in the link below. And let's get to it, man. Like we're born to be great. We're born with the That's DNA right. of greatness. And it's our job to unlock and discover that aspect of ourselves. So we yep. are here with you on that journey. Love you guys. Peace. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Be it now and then it will come to you. You can't wait till you get it to become that thing.